Hello and welcome to another Talking To episode. I'm your host Teddy and today I'm being joined once again by... Aiden. And today we're going to be talking about the Tim and T 2003 Season 1 Episode 20, The Monster Hunter. So, what do you think about this episode briefly? Well, this episode, Teddy, it was um, it was certainly very different to what I was expecting um, from last week's um, little little chat. I was, I didn't, I didn't expect this at all, to be honest with you. It was one of those in between episodes, like it was there, if you understand. It was just a little filler episode for what's going to happen next next week's episode. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I have to say that I think that this episode overall has always been like a really fun one, I'd say. And I'd say it's like a really great example of what the show can be at times when, like, in terms of being really good. Where even though the actual main focus of the actual episode is not necessarily on like a story thing, uh, but is more like a, just a fun venture, which I would say that's still really fun to watch. But there is still a lot of story elements in there for like the overall arc and story. And say that it's like so many fun bits about this one with the characters interacting with each other and the new characters. I think there's like a lot of really fun bits about this episode. Um, okay, so uh, how do how should we go around this episode? Because I feel like there's two bits we can go around, like either the rough and scenes first or the main stuff with the Monster Hunter stuff. Uh, which uh, one would you like to do first? Should we go with the uh, Monster Hunter stuff first, perhaps? Or shall we... Oh. I, I'm not too sure. I really don't know. Maybe the Monster Hunter, because there's a lot of Monster Hunter stuff in there, perhaps. And of course, then Raph and Leo can come afterwards, perhaps. We could, or, That's how you want to work it. Or we, or we could, or we could just quickly talk about the rough new scenes because th- there's like hardly anything in there to really talk about really too much. Uh, so do we could just do this? Yeah, good point. Let's do that first. Um, okay, so overall with these scenes, because there's hardly anything to really talk about. I mean, there's some bits to talk about, but there's not really too much to really go into detail here. But with these scenes, we do get to see uh, Raph is coming to the barn and seeing Leo feeling depressed about what's happened uh, uh, recently. And that's when Raph decides to help Leo try and build swords. And that's more or less their little story bit there. So what do you think about these scenes throughout the episode? Um, to be honest, I there wasn't really much to say about them. Like you said, it was very short very brief however it just showed raf and leo's brotherhood is very strong with one another like their brotherhood is really strong they've got each other's backs even though they treat each other like like rubbish sometimes but they are still brothers at the end of the day and they care for one another and they and they treat one another with respect and of course i really did enjoy how raf helped leo um get out of his um what i call um wallowing um, wallowing stage, like wallowing phase. I mean, like he's just down in the dumps. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He he feels like he's dishonored himself in a way against Shredder in New York. And what I just like to see is that Raf is just there supporting him in the way which he knows best by helping him regain his strength through his craftsmanship. And yeah, it was really cool to see. Yeah, to say that these scenes, I just love them so much for what they really show between Raph and Leo's relationship between each other. And I like how um, at the beginning, Leo uh, is all depressed and all that, and then when he sees Raph, he immediately thinks that he's going to go off and just complain about how he failed and all that. And I like how Raph doesn't do that. He generally wants to help, and he does help. I just love the relationship they build here. I think is one which I would definitely like to like explore a lot more in the show because uh, I thought that this was like the like a great style scene like the very style of their relationship with like respect and all that and I just love it so much. The only thing which I will say about this scene and I feel like you might have picked up on this, um, Leo was able to take off his bandages after hitting some metal and that somehow helped him he- like heal himself. I I find that a bit very unrealistic or is that just me? <laughs> Um, to be honest, I, I'm not too sure. Some people may think it's unrealistic, some people don't. I maybe what I'm thinking is maybe he regained enough strength through the, his craftsmanship, like he worked the muscles, and the muscles have healed because it has been a couple of episodes since he was um, left in such a state. But maybe he's all healed up now, or maybe the craftsmanship of his blade has restored his strength and his spirits in that's how i that's how i like to see it 
Yeah, you know, I, I just always feel that it just come off as like a very weird and bit unrealistic just because he's just running away in metal and then all of a sudden he can somehow now use his um um his other arm and now his ribs are okay. It just comes off as just like uh, very unrealistic in so many ways. Um, so going into the actual uh, Monster Hunter stuff. Uh, so we first start off with uh, Casey coming into the house and then being told to leave because he's getting snow everywhere. And that's when Mikey comes uh, in and reveals that he's been on the walk. Uh, do you have anything to say about those scenes? Um, i got to say, I like how April's becoming like a mother to everyone in the household. Like, she's looking after the, um, the house, she's looking after the turtles. And it's like her own little family she's running. And of course, she's like the head honcho of the household. You don't want to mess with April. Like, especially... Um, what we saw earlier with Casey and April, um, they are just going at each other's necks right now. Like April especially is like, look, I've just cleaned this up and you walk in here like a Neanderthal and just ruin everything again. And it's just quite funny to see um, Rachel, um, not, what am I saying, Rachel? April, sorry, April and Casey's relationship um, developing very slowly. Um, but yeah, that was quite funny to see. Um, but with the um, Mikey going outside around um, the woods, um, I didn't really have too much to say to it, but I did have to agree with Casey on that one, in which he actually knew that he was trying to keep a low profile. And of course, Mikey goes out into the woods and gets himself seen on footage, like CCTV footage. And now he is the reason why this episode exists because he was the one that got caught and caused every problem in this episode to date. So yeah, but that's, that's what, that's my overall opinion about those couple of scenes so far. Yeah. I'll say that with the April stuff, I'll just say that April's attitude changed extremely quick in this episode. And, and I do see where you come from with like the mother aspects of her character, which I do agree with, but I do think that her going from, uh, what like the last time we saw like truly being herself was episode uh, seventeen, where she was just having breakfast with the guys, and now here she's just getting um, like very overprotective because someone brought in some snow into the house. Uh, I just, do you think that her attitude changed a bit too quickly? Um, that's all I really got to say about those scenes. Um, but going into the next one, we do have um, Abigail Finn, also known as the Monster Hunter, arise and tells everyone that, you know, she's going to be here searching for the um, for, for Mikey. So what do you think about that scene? And also, what do you think about the Monster Hunter? Um, those scenes, I was a bit shocked. At first, I thought it was the Shredder and the Foot coming after Mikey after he was seen on on the footage and I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's going to go down the foot clang, the shredder. They're bringing in armored personnel carriers. Now I'm like, this could turn into an awesome fight, but sadly it wasn't. Um, it was this crazy monster hunter, Abby get Dr. Abigail Finn. And to be honest, I was a bit really surprised that Abigail Finn would just roll up out of nowhere and just start, proclaiming there's a monster in the woods and of course she was trespassing on casey's property and of course he actually manhandled casey by literally getting him getting his arm in an uncomfortable position to actually make a recording of him to say oh look there's a monster what do you have to say whilst his arm is like locked in a position uh, that is uh, that can be that can be gone down as assault. So assault and trespassing so far she's done. And literally, I just she comes in as a crazy loony. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I do. I, I was thinking about that throughout the whole episode, but basically they could just tell the police and that she's there. But, yeah. Um, the one thing which I do, um, I don't have too much to really say about the scene, but the one thing which I do want to say about it is the fact that um, when she showed Casey the footage, she goes, uh, oh, what do you think about that, bub? <laughs> and I just, just could not stop thinking about Wolverine. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, what do you uh, think about, um, Abigail Finn overall? Um, overall, I think she's an absolute lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've always really enjoyed That's literally character. the one word to describe her. Yeah, I, I've always really enjoyed the character. Um, 
and quick before we do go any further, what do you think about her catchphrase, Parker? Because that is just one of the things which I always instantly rec- uh, like think of when I think of turtles. Parker, literally, is it's very iconic for that character. It's like Parker and everything else. Like that's the one word I got from that video, that episode. I mean, like literally, the one word that's stuck in my head is either Parker or Gungala. But we'll get into Gungala later. Yeah, I mean, I just love that catchphrase so much. And one of the funny things is that um, when I was talking to Megan Thomas' head, I was actually able to go uh, to uh, say the catchphrase after like nearly 20 years, so <laughs> she still has it in her. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, okay, um, so then going into uh, the next uh, part about this bit, we do get to see uh, Donnie and uh, Mikey trying to go after that actual van itself and try to get the footage and see what they're up to. But unfortunately, things don't exactly go their way, and they get stuck in a freezing container, and they nearly freeze to death. Uh, what do you think about that scene? Um, to be honest, I didn't really have too much to say, except Mikey is... Mikey's <sighs> perception on things is very, very minimal. That's all I can say. Like, he just walks straight into the trap, and without no second thought he just walks in and thinks oh this is where the tape should be in a giant cage looking place in the back of a truck like he's he doesn't have that thought process he just leaps before he thinks and that's what caused most of the issues in this episode today but yeah it was really funny just seeing him walk into a trap and thinking oh gosh mikey you need to you need to wake up, man. Just walks in into a trap, for, almost freezes to death. Um, but yeah, I didn't really have too much to say apart from that. I mean, uh, I do have. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think that this scene of rules, I'd say, is quite fun and, and in line with what I'd expect from like something like this. And I know that like the the tales were a bit stupid, I'd say, in terms of that. I didn't really think too far ahead of this. And but I just think that it's just like one of those scenes that's just like really fun and just. One of those scenes that you would see in one of these type of episodes, and it just worked somehow, but yeah. And then, like, another surprising uh, thing was, which I'm very surprised they didn't do, because, like, because Parker and Abigail Finn, they have, like, very advanced technologies. I mean, the Sorties, uh, uh, they are very advanced for, like, 2003 times. So, the only thing which i got to say about the freezing container thing is why didn't they have cameras in there? Because at the end of the episode when they do catch the green monster, it's just like you could have had like actual footage that you had the green monster. That's <laughs> the only thing I've got to really say about that. Oh yeah. I I can't believe I didn't realise that. Like they didn't have footage for the ninjas, uh for Mikey and Donnie. Like there was no CCTV footage whatsoever and alarm went off. And then towards the episode, the end of the episode he got the footage of the green monster. So, I don't really know. I don't really understand their, their way of thinking. Like, they have the footage. Like, they have proof. But they just tend to not use it for some reason, which I find a bit dumb. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just total soft to rule, so... Uh, but then, going into the next scene, we do get to see the turtles yeah. in, the, in the farmhouse and just getting warmed up and saying that basically... Um, if ever go wants a green monster, they're gonna give him one. Uh, did anything to say about lo- by the little bit scene? Um, nothing much really. But I'm going back to the fact that April is such a mother towards the turtles. Like she's sat them down, she's got them wrapped up in blankets in a warm pot of water for their feet. Like she is such a mother in that scene, and of course, it really does show that she really does care for these turtles. Like even though they just met a couple of couple of episodes back, and now they're like a huge family of all these different things, and which is pretty cool to see as well. And she's just a really caring character, and it and that scene just shows it. Yeah, I, I will say this. I, I do think that this episode for me, I found it very comedic in some some parts, and most of the time with uh, like two and three tales, I don't laugh out loud or anything. But with this one, this episode, I did have like a few chuckles and. Uh, it's uh, been the same that he believed that they would go in, uh, into that freezing uh, free, freezer container. That got me like a <laughs> like that. Um, but other than that, it was a decent scene. 
Uh, so then going into the next scene, we do get to see Donny, Mikey, and Casey have dressed up as uh, like green men and going around uh, the woods, going after the salties and um, like taking them down. Uh, do you have anything to say about that little bit scene? Uh, yeah, but that scene where the turtles go into the um, the woods and of course they dress up as the green men. Um, I got to say, where do they get the green suits from? Like that's that's my question. Unless Casey had some lying around from when, whenever I just, I just don't really know where they got the suits from. That's just what really perplexed me is the most. Unless they made it, which I tip my hat off to them. Like pretty good craftsmanship right there. Proper ghillie suits they were. Yeah, I think they did make them. They did look very homemade. Um, but what do you think about like, the fight scenes between the characters and the sorties? Um, to be honest, they weren't as cool as some others. Um, like, for instance, the Shredder and the Foot and the Turtles as themselves. But the sorties were an alright adversary. Like, sure, they were robots and drones. But... To be honest, with the Turtles, it was an easy adversary to take down. And so there wasn't really much of a fight or a, a, a seam of peril, if you get what I mean. Like, there wasn't a fear factor. Like, the Turtles weren't facing a dangerous threat. So it was easily taking them down. So that's what I thought of it. Yeah, I, I can understand. I was just, I was just thinking that because of the, this episode is supposed to be lucky. Like more light tone comedic one in, uh, compared to all the other ones I can sort of get behind and just say that yeah this is like a little fun fight so yeah but I, I, I did quite enjoy it and I think that like with the Donny fight where it's just running around and doing parkour I did find that like really entertaining and I, 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 was, I will say this I was quite surprised at just how quickly they was able to move in those big suits because I would like assume that they were like slowing down quite a bit because of how big they are but yeah, also I don't want really to mention this. Casey's oh, yeah. just saying Goongalad for um when they're trying to scare Abigail Finn. Just wow. Goongala. <laughs> uh, I actually wanted to bring that up as well. Um, today, like, what is like Goongala? Like, I swear I've heard him say it before somewhere, but I can't remember where, unless this is his first time saying it. Uh, he has said it before, uh, and Google is like his catchphrase, but he definitely has said it before in the show, but, I, but like, I can't specifically like, remember what episode it's just because, for me, when I think of Casey, I always think that he's going to say it in every episode, but I know that that's not the case, but yeah, I think like some of the early episodes that he was in, he didn't say it, but yeah. Um. Okay, so what do you think about when when that she revealed that the Green Man was actually real? Do, do, uh, do anything to say about that? To be honest, I wasn't expecting the Green Man to come out of nowhere and be real. I was like, okay, that's a bit weird. Comes out of nowhere, and I'm like, hold on a minute. Casey, like, Casey used to be out there with his, with his grandmother, of course, but I can't believe Casey never knew there was something out there. Unless, out of sheer coincidence, it was crossing their path, and, of course, they saw it. Like, out of sheer coincidence, that thing's going to be, like, living there for hundreds of or dozens so years now. And, of course, it finally gets captured on this very day. And no one's seen it before until now. I just, I don't know if that seems a bit weird. Do you understand where I'm coming from, though? Like, it just comes out of the middle of the nowhere. Yeah, I do definitely understand. That, and that's, like, a problem which I do have, like, in other, like, movies and TV shows where it's just, oh, what coincidence is that it's there because it's there for the story, like... One great example which I have is uh, in Infinity War, uh, Gamora has that uh, that uh, that double bladed uh, knife thing and uses some Thanos and just and just like well you've had that all this time you know once brought it up and now it's like the most important thing in your in your life. It, I, I understand where you're coming from. It's just like you, you, like you should have shown it before and it just feels very forced in because it has to be there for the story and stuff like that, but. I mean, even though that the Greyman is revealed to be a woman and has kids, where's the father? <laughs> uh, that's like another question which I'll go about. We should go about the whole thing now. <laughs> um, I didn't question that. I just thought, okay, I'm not going to question how it, or why that is even possible. I'm not going to question it. It's turtles. Let's just move on. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so then going into uh, the final fight where we do get to see Mikey takes out uh, Abigail Finn in the forest at night. Uh, what do you think about that scene? Um, that scene was actually pretty alright. I did enjoy that scene in which Mikey was skulking around the woods, like stalking her as if she was like some sort of prey. Um, but yeah, I, I did enjoy the fact that she, my, um, excuse me, Mikey was just able to skulk around the woods, trip her over, and manage to steal her gun, which is pretty cool. And manage to like destroy it and make it all crumple. Like that's got to be some strength to do something like that. But when Mikey came down like uh, like a spider, like in Spider Man, where he just comes down upside down and says "boo," and of course she ru- Abigail runs away. I did enjoy that scene. That was like that, that was pretty funny for me. Yeah, to say that with this episode, with how it's presented as being like a very comedic like tone episode with some like stor- like very story focused stuff. Uh, scattered throughout it. I do think that this was like like a really great ending fight to this type of episode and it just works so well for what it's trying to do. It just works perfectly and I do think there's like a lot of really great stuff in here. I do think that sometimes the animation did look uh, quite good. I do think that the nighttime setting just looked amazing as well as the snow. Loved that a lot and I'll say that with like Mikey sneaking around with all the ninja vibes it just works so so well um, and yeah so uh, then, with the um, or the, the final bits of this episode, we do get to see that Abigail Finn's got the press there, and that's when it's revealed that the Tolls snuck out the Green Monster and put Casey there. Uh, what do you think about that scene? Um, it was pretty funny for me to see Casey being caged up instead of the animal, and of course humiliating at Doctor Abigail in front of all the press, like literally ruin her reputation and everything but there's there's one thing that um that that plays on my mind how in the devil did donnie get the get the creature out of the cage unnoticed like there was cameras there and of course i know he knocked the cameras out but how did that how was there no noise how was there no signs of forced entry and how how did he just get him out in under like a second and have replaced casey instead like was there a secret hatch? Like, that's what really ticks me off. Like, I don't know how they did it, and I want to know how they did it. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's just gonna be one of those. Uh, to quote a uh, to quote an episode that um that, uh, oh, to quote an episode I've already seen. There are some things man was never meant to temple. Oh no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. just think about that. That quote doesn't actually really work too well. Oh, <laughs> that would have been cool if you said it properly. The, oh, the quote doesn't really work too well. It, either way, my point is, is that we that we don't know what um what it is and all that, and I doubt we'll ever know. But they did it, and it works. And I must admit, I, I do. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think because again, like with, with the lighthearted story and what this story is, was supposed to be and stuff like that, it just worked. And again, I do, I did find it a bit funny with Casey being there and calling the lady out to be like 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 a crazy and stuff like that. Um and yeah, so that was then, funny. Uh yeah, so then for the final scene, we do get to see um the turtles all come out all together and saying they're gonna go back and defeat the Shredder. So what do you think about that scene? Um, just going back to the um the Abigail scene where she gets absolutely humiliated by um by Casey, like surely that would be a really like a th- offense. Like seriously, like the press has footage of Casey being caged up, and of course with Casey's like um events, witnessed events, like he she trespassed on his property, he assaulted. He, she assaulted him on his property and now she has him locked up in a cage like that's pretty that's a lot of things he could go to the police with and get Abigail locked up for good yeah <laughs> um so what do you think about that uh, um about that final scene where they all uh, team not to go uh, or basically want to go back to go and defeat the shredder um i really did enjoy that scene where leo emerges from his from his blacksmith or layer, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, it was just really, I really did like to see um, Leo coming out of his 
um, wallowing stage and just becoming himself again. He's got a new sword made from scrap metal, which he's made in a homemade blacksmith. And it was just really cool to see him. He's back to his old self. He's got his blades. He's ready to go back to New York and finish the job. And his brothers is all his brothers and his brotherhood is all behind him, ready to follow him back into the darkness to defeat the enemies. Um, I just really did enjoy that. Like he's back. Like after him wallowing around in that shed for days on end, he's back and he wants to take down the Shredder once and for all. So it's gonna I think it's gonna play out really cool next episode. And I just really did enjoy seeing him back together again and of course his brothers are there to support him every step of the way which is pretty cool to see so with this scene for me i've it's always been a really weird one because on the one hand i do like how they are setting things up and moving the story along to go into the next uh, story arc and go off and defeat the shred and stuff like that and it's great to see that leo has be, uh, like better himself and stuff like that but at the same time, it does feel as though that they have rushed this whole story out completely. And it feels as though that he was just there for an episode to just get better. And now he's, he's back to normal as if nothing's happened. I do think that's like the biggest problem I've always had with this episode. Is the fact that, I mean, like, hopefully you can understand where I come from. It, like, it, it's, a, it's a great story that they could have had. Yeah. Like, developing his character, building the Europe to being his great self again. I've also thought that this story arc with Leo being on the barn and building his confidence up and stuff like that should have been drawn out for like the rest of the season and then have the so uh, for like the next story arc uh, where going back and defeat Shredder as the season finale. That should have been how the season sh- should have played out. But because of the way they did it here, it just feels though that they've rushed it completely and it annoys me so much. <laughs> yeah, I understand where you're coming from with that. Like, it, it does feel a bit rushed. Like, surely it would take time for his wounds to heal, his strength and his ability to train. Like, for instance, once he got his sword back, I, w- I was thinking, okay, he's got his sword back. He's going to go train some more with his brothers, rebuild his strength, his courage and his spirit. That's what I wanted to see. But like you said, it was a bit rushed. Yeah. Um. So what do you think about, so what do you think about this episode overall? Overall, I I really did like it. It was something different. It was light-hearted compared to like the whole bombshell that the last three episodes gave us. Like full-on action those episodes gave us. And I think this episode was a nice, calm, um, somewhat like re- de- relaxing and de-escalation of the seriousness within the series thus far. And I think it was just a little gap to have the turtles breathe take up take time to heal and regroup as a as a ninjas um but yeah i just i really did enjoy this episode it was nice light-hearted um didn't have too much action in it and it was quite comedic like you said before but yeah it was just a really really nice chill out episode which i think is needed after the last couple of episodes that i've watched like like I said before, the action in there was just a lot to take in. But this episode was definitely well needed. Yeah, I'll just say that this episode overall, I've always really enjoyed it for just being a light-hearted, fun episode with some like story stuff thrown in there. And I do think that was just like a really great choice in their part. And I do think that this episode is a really great stand-up one for doing just that. But I do think that with all, with all I previously mentioned with the Leo stuff, I do feel as though that that was probably the biggest um, like um, negative about this episode was the fact that they just more or less completely rushed a really great uh, story arc they could have told, and there was like so much they could have done, but I just feels though that they just rushed everything with that bit. But overall, this this episode was a really great and fun one, so I can't complain all too much. But it but like the little things are just too annoying. Um. Okay, so you don't hear uh, some comments about this episode. Let's hear them. Um, okay, so on YouTube, uh, the four kids, uh, they put, It was fun to watch how Donnie and Mikey handle, um, ha- handled with the Monster Hunter. It was heartwarming to watch Raph, and Leo, uh, Raph helping Leo. Uh, this, this was once again a well-written episode overall. Uh, Tim and T, uh, or, well, uh, oh god, uh, the Tim and T series is written very well. And yeah, I can't complain about that. 
um, Hilde, you go, uh, put, uh, how this version and another version, um, like, helps each other greatly, I can't, I don't want to say what one, because I've got a thing that maybe one day we might get to that series or something like that, uh, Ethan Dolly, they put, I thought it was a great, a great, and, I thought it was great, and loved, uh, that Raph was helping Leo recover, Isabel Hurata, they put, oh god, I'm pretty sure I said it right, uh, they put, must have been to have said, it, it, it wasn't my fault, but it is, um, put, uh, put my family's life in danger, I couldn't help protect them, uh, I think that's a Leo quote, um, so, uh, what do I think sacrificing is that, okay, yeah, that's, okay, that's a quote from Leo, <laughs> decent, uh, Ronald Anderson, they put, poor Leo, nice. um, on Facebook, we got, Jim Ludgy, they put, it's funny, and I enjoyed it, glad to see Leonardo got, uh, fully recovered, and yep, uh, Raph, um, uh, looking good, Leo, <laughs> um, Lisa, um, Danielle Hollenbury, uh, they, uh, put, it's a mixed bag for me, very much enjoy the interactions with Mikey and Don and Casey, it's fun, and the Leo Raph stuff was important, otherwise you end up with nothing but two of them uh, burning heads all the time, showing them actually brotherly uh, making their dynamic more complex and real, and less two dimensional. Uh, April's behaviour in this episode uh, get, uh, gets directly on my <laughs> gets directly on my tits though, uh, why is she uh, suddenly obsessed with cleaning, uh, shrieking like a uh, mental uh, fishwife at Casey for trekking snow into into his own ho- house, it feels like lazy lazy writing Fish. and unpleasant <laughs> uh, stereotypes, uh, April as a sto- uh, sole female uh, they clean up after those boys who just aren't smart enough to do it themselves, uh, gross and disappointing for a show that usually is great at Character, uh, characterization. The promise, ca- uh, the promise showdown at the end of the episode is an awesome hook, though. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you want to hear some trivia now? Let's hear it. Um. Okay. Um. Oh. Okay. So there's a bit of trivia here that it's a little spoilery, but you won't really find out about this for another few years or so. Do Do you want me to reveal it, or do you want to just wait for that in a few years? Well, we might just read it now. I'm. I'm probably gonna. Forget it anyways in the next couple of years, mate. <laughs> um, okay, well, the green monster is actually connected to, um, you know, the bit in the you notes know, on the ground with that, um, like, mystical man and mystical city and stuff like that. The green monster is connected to those people somehow. So, yeah. Really? Yeah, there's... Wow, I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, there's, like, one scene in a future episode in season four where they reveal it and... It's like only like a flashback for like a matter of uh, seconds. It's a blink and miss it type scene, and they're not really there for too long. But even but basically the main thing was basically that those people had enslaved the green monsters. So yeah, um, Leo made uh, new katanas during this episode oh, with the help of right. uh, from Raph. Uh, in this episode, Donatello is seen putting back together a toaster. This may be not to the Mirage comics. Um, in which he becomes obsessed uh, with fixing and repairing many broken things within the farmhouse. Uh, as Casey, Don and Mikey jump at Dr. Finn in the green uh, man costume, Casey shouts, Goongala, Goongala, this is Spellcry from the Mirage comics. The green monster, uh, monster uh, storybook is an, uh, is, an adat- uh, is an adaptation uh, of this episode. Oh, uh, uh, basically that bit there was basically saying that they adapted the story into a like uh, like a storybook for kids like to like learn how to read and stuff like that. And then another little trivia on here, which um um cool. uh, which they don't really say you here, but is really uh, really interesting. But when Leo comes out the barn and sees all the all the characters, uh, for a scene there we do get to see Mus Winter uh, wearing his robes. However, his sleeves are not there. So yeah. <laughs> A little bit, little bit of information for that bit there. Yeah. Okay, so for the um, cast, we got Mark Thompson playing Casey Jones, Sam Regal playing Don Tillo, Wayne Grayson uh, playing Mark Angelo, Megan Hollings here playing Abigail Finn. Uh, we've got Green Man who doesn't have a voice. We got Veronica Taylor playing uh, April O'Neil. We got um, uh, we've got uh, Michael Sinclair playing Leonardo. We got Parker who's played by Michael Sinclair as well. Uh, we've got Crooked Abbey playing Raphael, and Aaron Dunstan playing uh, Spinter. So the only person who I want to look into this week um, is Megan Hollingshead, who did the voice of Abigail Finn. 
and you're going to be surprised with her because she's done so much and you've seen her in quite a few things and I feel as though that the main thing which you have seen her from is Pokemon where she played Nurse Joy. Oh my god. Oh. oh, I can't believe I didn't notice that before. Now that you say it, I can make the connection. Yeah, she's been in like, so many anime things. Um, I, I, I don't know where to begin because she's just... She's done like so much. Uh, she was in Naruto, uh, Bleach is another thing that's uh, thing is quite popular now. Um, she was in there. She was in the Mega Mime game. Um, what else? Law of Naruto. <laughs> God, that's Law of Naruto. Uh, Bleach again for I think that's a game. Resident Evil. Uh, Degradation. What else? What else? Uh, yeah, she's she's done so much. Um, like a lot of anime, <laughs> quite a bit of anime actually. Um, oh yeah, a lot of anime. Yeah, I've some been... recent as well actually. Like um, ble- like Bleach, of course. Fire and Ena- Fire Emblem, Engage, and of course the Pokemon series, like you said before. But yeah, yeah, there's uh... a lot she's done here. Yeah, I think she's done a, a bit too much, really. Cool. I'm just going back and running on the on, on 2000s. Christ, <laughs> she's done so much. So, she was in Salem Moon. I'm still scrolling down. Which is, okay, well, I've reached the bottom. She started, it in, she started acting in 1979. Christ, she's done a lot. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't... I... Hey, she's... Oh, my God. <laughs> Like, I don't yeah. even know what to really say, because she's done so yeah. much, and... Yeah, that's that's all I've really got to say about it. It's just... It's very impressive what, what she's been able to do. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, um... Oh, she's even been in Deadly Skies. Um, it's an old PlayStation 2 game. Um, I played it briefly, I believe, when I was... When I was young, but, yeah, that's just crazy, though. That's just... That's just really crazy just to see how much she's done. And it just just shows how talented she is as an actor, which is pretty cool. And it's just pretty cool. And, of course, another upcoming is Naruto. Sadly, haven't had the chance to watch it yet. But, yeah, it was just she's been in quite a lot. But the only things that I can get from this, oh, my God, she's actually been in The Last of Us. Was she? Oh. Well, again, very impressive. Yeah, as an additional voice actor. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what to really say. What she's been impressive. Yeah, I think she was an additional. It does say additional voices, but I would like to know what. Because I know The Last of Us is a pretty big, big franchise on the PS, but sadly, I still haven't played it myself. But I've seen gameplay footage of it, so. Yeah. Okay, well, moving on to the next yeah, bit. She's, um, she's very impressive. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, moving on to the next bit. Um, so for next week's episode, it is called... Uh, Tim- oh, no, God, oh, God. Next, uh, next week's episode is called Return to New York Part 1. So what do you think is going to happen in that episode? Uh, I always get this wrong, but I'm just going to go out and say it anyways. Well, the Turtles, they return to New York, and... Um, I think what's going to happen is they're going to go back to their old lair, set up a base of operations and reclaim their turf. And then, of course, they're going to slowly build up their strength again, go around, kick some kick some foot around the town a bit. And um, then I think something drastic is going to happen. They're going to be in a fight. And, of course, it's probably going to leave us in a major cliffhanger, which is going to absolutely annoy the hell out of me. You're somewhat close. S- somewhat. It. Uh, I can't exactly give you the point for it because there's a lot different. To, it's a lot different to how it plays out in the episode compared to what your description is. But it, it, it's not. It's not even halfway. But like, you're on the right tracks. So I'll give you. I'll give you that at least. <laughs> um, but oh, here's come where on. you can't even give me like some points. Uh no, not really. <laughs> uh, but 
going into the next bit, which I yeah, also man. know they're going to hate a next lot. Next time. <laughs> so going into the next bit, which I know you're going to uh, hate a lot. Uh, yep, yeah, I already know they hate it. It is... Who do you think is going to be starting the episode? And I'll give you a hint. It's one of the turtles. Every single time. Um, I want to say it's going to be... Oh, what was it last time? It was, it was mine. It was rare. I'm gonna go with Leo. No, unfortunately, it's Raph. Every, I should have just gone with Raph. <laughs> I was thinking Raph, and then of course I said Leo because Leo's back, and I thought we're gonna have like a huge, awesome, like cut scene where Leo's gonna say, "I have returned with my brothers, and we're gonna reclaim this city for ourselves and restore order or something like that." But no. Nope. Ah, next time. Yeah, no, you're completely wrong. I will say this for like, for, for the opening bit. Um, is is uh, like, like, okay, it's not a spoiler, but like, it's a it's a really amazing line for Raph starts off with. The difference between men and boys is the size of their toys, and that cannot be further from the truth. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I I don't know if I misheard that, but. What? Yes, you heard me. Rust says the difference between men and boys is the size of their toys. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That is to be interpreted in a lot of different ways, but I am not going to go down that rabbit hole because I know it would cause arguments. <laughs> hmm. I think we should just best leave it as that and never speak of it ever again. <laughs> yeah, good. Let's just move on, shall we? Let let, let the audience interpretate that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, do you think I'll say about this episode, or are you all done with this one? I'm pretty much done with this episode, mate. I've said what I needed to say. It's a pretty nice, chill out episode, and yeah, can't wait to see the next one. You had to say overall, this was just like a like yeah. I think you put put uh, probably put it best with just like a nice uh, true episode, and. I do think that going into the next one, to, we need this two episode just to like wind down from like the last story arc and just winding up for the next one. Um, but yeah, so if you do want to um, get onto the podcast, you can leave a comment on on the YouTube uh, community post. You can leave it on the Facebook page, uh, the Reddit page. You can leave a text message on Anchor, or you can leave a voice message on Anchor. And uh, yeah, so I've been your host Teddy, and I've been Hayden, and we'll see you all soon. Goodbye, yo. Bye. Bye.